I am a professional caricature artist and I do over a hundred events a year drawing with marker on paper and it's a great souvenir. But I also draw live digital caricatures where I display it on a TV and I draw on my iPad and print it out and I use the program Procreate. And in this video, I'm going to show you my basic method for drawing quick, live, digital caricatures in color in Procreate. And I hope this method helps you too. Okay, when I am drawing people live digitally, I've got about seven minutes to do the best drawing that I can. And so, how am I going to be efficient and do a quick drawing? And the solution I came up with is I create a layer group like this. Each one of these layers has a purpose. And as I put it into a group, I can now duplicate it before every drawing. Because there's not enough time to create layers on the fly. That'd be super inefficient. But if I have the group created in advance, I just duplicate it and work on the next drawing. So that's step one is create a layer group. And I am going to show you what each of these layers is for as I demonstrate this drawing. I'm going to draw from a photo on this video so you can see how I do it. Step two is I select the sketch layer. And then I select a color that's different from black because it'll just stand out better. So I can select red or blue is what I usually select. And then I'm gonna do a quick silhouette sketch of the shape of the face I'm drawing. I don't have time to do a detailed sketch, so I'm just gonna do a basic sketch I'm going to show you something else here too. When you're doing a quick sketch on the fly like that, it's not always centered or sized right. So then I can touch that arrow button, resize it, and center it a little bit better. And you'll notice something. The opacity on this layer is already lowered. If you touch it with two fingers, you can see I've got the opacity at 18%. And by sliding my finger, I can raise it or lower it. But this is already created within that layer group. So I don't have to keep changing the opacity of the sketch layer every time I do a drawing that's pre-created. I don't ever have to touch it every time I duplicate a group that's already set in place. Okay, then now we can draw the lines. Ready for step three. Okay, step three. First thing I want to do is select this top layer that's titled lines. I've got that selected. Now I'm going to select my favorite pin and that is it's a studio pin but I've adjusted it a little bit so I can get thicker lines with it. Now I'm going to select the color. I want black lines just like it's going to be a cartoon drawing. Just double checking. I've got lines selected and here we go. This is the cool thing. You can zoom in or not zoom in. At this point, you get to decide that, but I like starting with this eye. Okay. Okay, so this part of the drawing is I'm trying to get good line work. I'm still moving fairly quickly, but uh, you'll notice that I want the lines to be tapered on the ends and thick in the middle. And this is totally different from my commissioned art style of drawing. So when I do commissioned art, I'm adding a lot more details. Whereas a live caricature, I just want to get a quick cartoon likeness. 
And this is my face that I'm drawing, by the way. And uh, I've drawn myself so many times that I could almost just not use the photo at all and just come up with a funny thing. I just realized I just dropped some color in there and filled that in and I didn't explain it. But when I get to the color phase, I'll explain how I did that. So I'm trying to vary the lines. Looks like I got kind of a wide nose. So I'm gonna start with the bulb of the nose here. I've got some big old nostrils, <laughs> maybe not that big. And then, uh, but pretty big. So uh, I can, I'm not afraid to add some nostrils. I've got a smile close to my big nose then lips, and then let's uh, add that mustache on there. I might fast forward part, I mean by part of this section here because this video is really about the process and the layers. And so the step-by-step -step of the, uh, each little line I draw might be a little boring, but. Just a quick, simple collar to tie it all together. Okay, time for step four, the color. So I'll go back to my layer group and I select the color layer. Then I select the color spot up here and I've got this all of these palettes of color and I've created this palette of color in advance skin tones so I've got all kinds of skin tones and tones that help me create different skin tones like for lips and uh, different things different colors of hair and that sort of thing and I'm gonna share this skin tone palette with you coming up in the video and I'm also gonna share the brush that I use but this is what I do. I've got all that selected. I'm on the right layer. Now this is my trick for quick color. So I am just gonna outline every spot on the face that's gonna be that color. I'm just gonna basically outline it as quick as I can. Then I'm gonna touch this color dot and drag it over and then release it inside the outline and it automatically fills. Now this is taking a little bit longer than normal because I have a beard. But if a person doesn't have a beard, you can color their face and their neck in one motion almost. Okay, the next thing I do is I do the eyes. I don't know if you saw that, but let me do that again. I'm on skin tone. I touch my finger down on the white, and the white color is now selected. So I'm coloring in the white of the eyes. Okay, now the hair. I'm looking at the photo. This may not be my exact hair color, but just to be quick, I've selected this color. I'm outside the lines. You know they say artists, you know an artist because they don't they never color outside the lines, but I say the opposite. I'm like an artist has the confidence to color outside the lines and not even worry about it. All right, now the beard is more gray. I'll show you a quick trick. We're gonna select brown. We're gonna go to uh, this classic. Then we're gonna move over. I'm gonna move this dot around because I want it to be brownish gray for my beard. That's about right. Okay, so now, once again, I'm gonna outline the beard. Yeah, people with beards take an extra couple minutes to draw. <laughs> Sometimes that's a joke I use whenever I'm drawing people. 
and it gets a laugh. I basically say, long hair and beards take an extra two minutes. And I'm kind of like playfully scolding the person for growing their hair too long, and they, they laugh about it. So that's a free joke you can use while drawing people. That's a bonus. <laughs> okay, now obviously I've got some gray and this part of my beard. I'm selecting white again. I'm gonna, I've lowered the opacity and now we're just gonna, well, maybe a little bit higher. Color in my white beard. If you want to get fancy, I think uh, the, uh, the mustache has a little bit of brown in it. I don't want to get too detailed. An artist, I mean, can get lost in the details. That's the thing. Sometimes you have to set a little clock by the side with a timer that's ticking. And it reminds you that you've got seven minutes because you'll get caught up in the details. And literally, that is what they recommended us at Walt Disney World. They literally said, buy a watch, wear it on your right hand so you can see it at a glance or take it off and set it on your easel and watch it as you draw. And it will keep you focused on moving quickly. Because it's a tendency of any artist to get lost in the details. I've outlined it and I'll drop it in there. Bada boom. And that is step four, the flat color. Okay, now for step five. I'm going to go back to my layer group and I am going to select shadows. So the shadow group, I've done several things to it. First thing, I have selected multiply. That is going to allow it to, uh, it multiplies it, it colors on the layer below it, but doesn't cover up the layer below it. I've also created it as a clipping mask. And with a clipping mask, basically that means that I can, no matter what I do, it's not going to go beyond the layer below it. So I can't go outside the lines. Okay, and I've got all this set up in advance so that I don't have to recreate all that stuff while I'm drawing someone live. Okay, so now I'm going to choose a darker skin tone for the shadows. And I'm just looking at the person and the shadows that I see. In this case, it is a photo. And I just remembered that I've also set up the opacity on the shadows here. I have a lowered opacity. That way I don't have to lower or raise the opacity when putting the shadows in. It's already set. This is going to be like a basic cartoon shadowing. And here we go. So I'm seeing a shadow on this side of my head. Uh, there's some shadows caused by the beard. Shadows under a big nose. Shadows in the eye socket cavity and under the eye. Shadows in the ear. We can maybe put some shadows here at where the cheek is pronounced. And I can leave it just like that, but if I feel like the edges are too rough, I can always select the smudge tool and maybe smooth out an edge by rubbing it like that. And because I had set that layer up like that, and I've got a quick set of shadows. Okay, we're ready for the final two steps and really put the finishing touches on the drawing. But first, I wanted to let you know that I have made available a link in the description of this video where you can get this exact canvas on, for Procreate. Now, this does require that you already have Procreate, but you can get this exact canvas where I've already pre-created all of these layers. And um, there's another one that I did also. I'm going to include that 
Here's another example and I'm also going to put in there my color, skin tone color swatches and I'm going to put in that Google Drive file my favorite pen that I use to draw just about everything. And you can study these layers, you can adjust them, make them your own. And I wanted to make it pretty cheap because you can create these on your own. So I basically priced it at below what you might pay for a really good pizza with all your favorite toppings on it. Because you know that the old saying says that uh, if you eat a pizza today, you're going to be hungry again tomorrow. But if you get these downloads, you can use them over and over again for the rest of your life. Now, as soon as you use that link, what's going to happen is you'll get an email and in the email you'll have a link to this Google Drive file. And here in the Google Drive file, I've got my favorite marker. Here I've got a video of that drawing I did. Uh, there's going to be two of these canvases for Procreate that you can download. I've got the skin tone swatches and the soft brush. And this is how you'll do it. You just click on it. Now this is a Procreate file, so it'll say unsupported file type down here, but don't worry about that. Just click this and then you can click send a copy or you can click open in. It will prepare to export. And then you just select Procreate. Or you can send it to files and open it and procreate through there. And then it's all yours and you can duplicate these and use it however you want. So please do me a favor, uh, take a look at that link and uh, it really does support the channel and helps me make more videos like this. Okay, now it's time for step six and that is adding the highlights. So I want to go back to my layer group and select highlights. Now the way I've got this set up is, first off, I've created it as a clipping mask, a selected clipping mask. Then in the blending modes, I've selected add. Now another a secret to this is that you can also select screen and it acts similar to add, but it's not as intense. And then add is adding a highlight and it looks awesome. So um, I've also lowered the opacity of this layer. So now I'm going to select a color, usually a darker color, and I am going to let's start off with just adding a rim light highlight. Like the light is coming from this side, maybe a little bit on the neck, tiny bit on the nose. And if I want to smooth that out, I can take the smudge tool and just run it along there and smooth it. And now I've got a couple of cool highlights and of course you can add more but when I'm in a big hurry I usually just add a few and to be honest you know true confession right here if I'm in a hurry and there's a long line of people that need to be drawn and especially if there's an artist next to me drawing and he's drawing faster than I am I'm feeling the pressure and so sometimes I can skip this shadows and highlights step but because, well, to be honest, you can make a great drawing with just the lines and the color, but it really is extra awesome if you can add the shadows and the highlights. Okay, step seven is the easiest step. So I'm gonna go back to the layer group. I'm gonna select background, and then I just wanna put something in the background so it's not this boring white color. Let's just select a blue and um, I can drop fill that background and then I'm going to resize it. Click on freeform and resize it like this because I want to frame it, but I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be a little off center just so that the drawing pops out more than the uh, background and boom, it is in place. And now I, if I feel like it's too bold, I can even lower the opacity a little bit to cause the drawing in front to pop out. And now it has a cool background and this drawing is complete. At this point, it's time to draw the next person in line, but there's a couple of options that you could go with. For example, 
let's say you want to save it so you click on this you click on the share button possibly as a JPEG you click on save image it goes straight to your camera roll or let's say you want to print it then this is what you're gonna do you're gonna click on JPEG you're gonna see all I'll see all these options and print is one of the options click on that I don't have a printer hooked up right now but the printer that I have hooked up will be right here and then uh, this print button will turn blue and you click that and you can print it out another option is I want to move on to the next drawing and so we click on the group file you'll see rename flatten or combine down <clears throat> and I hit click flatten and now I've got this drawing all the layers are combined and it's real easy to uh, save and get out of the way and then duplicate the next layer and start on the next drawing and before I go I just wanted to let you know how I learned how to do all these layers I found an artist that I really admired and he was selling some of his procreate canvases on Gumroad and I bought several of his canvases and I studied his layers I didn't understand everything he was doing but I adapted it to help me accomplish what I was trying to do and because I bought that from him I've been using that as an artistic tool for the past six or seven years and it's awesome and so that's why I put a link in the description hopefully you will take advantage of that and get these layer groups for yourself and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see how I do commissioned art in layers and procreate because there are several extra steps because those drawings I take hours to do let me know that and until the next time have fun practicing <laughs>